the Beyond Growth Show. I'm here with the wonderful Claudia Harvey. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Craig. Everyone, the Beyond Growth Podcast is a podcast for everyone who wants to increase their wealth. Craig and I are business owners and investors that share insights into building wealth, and we introduce you to expert guests. We use the three pillars of possibility, which include emotional support, business strategy, and financial understanding to help our listeners and viewers with their goals. So how are you doing today, Craig? I'm doing great. Thank you, Claudia. How about yourself? I am really, really good. And who's our guest today? Excellent. Well, our guest today is Whitney Graves, one of Saskatoon's Rock 102 FM announcer. She's a mother of two, an avid hunter, curler, and dog rescuer. Wow. Well, I can't wait to have Whitney on. And we had another DJ on, Steve Anthony from Much Music and Q107 back in January. So it'll be interesting to get a woman's perspective on in that role as being a DJ. And uh, I'm looking forward to the episode. So yeah. before we begin, everybody, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube and Spotify channel. And please comment and click the bell for any updates to videos. And before we continue, Claudia, you always like to start off with something positive. So what do you have for us today? Well, it's very, very shortly. It's going to be International Family Day on Saturday. And I'm looking forward to spending some quality time with my family. So my kids are, as some viewers and listeners know, they're late teens and early 20s. So our family day is a little bit different than when it was when they were little and growing up. And, um, you know, half the day is still spent sleeping in for them. <laughs> But we do a little bit different. And with um, the COVID lockdown, I think we're looking forward to some um, actual some board games because we actually bought some board games and we started getting to board games this year while we were in our lockdown. So I think we're going to have popcorn and pizza and board games. And I think that's what we're doing on, on Saturday. What about you, Craig? Well, as you know, uh, my family's a little bit older. I, my children are young adults now. So some of them, including Jordan, our, my eldest, uh, he lives in his own home now. My other two still live at home. But, you know, it's a little bit different for us now because now we have family that's outside the home and coming back in. So we'll see how it plays out uh, on this weekend, uh, who, can, who can make it and who can't, and uh, whether we can get together. Excellent. Excellent. Speaking of families, let's bring on Whitney and hear how she manages to balance her career and family. Hi, Whitney. How are you? Hi, Claudia. Hi, Craig. I'm great. How are you guys? Excellent. Awesome. We're great. Getting excited well. for a family day. Well, family day, I think, is um, different when you have older kids versus younger kids. You know, younger kids, I think it's crafts and baking and jumping on beds and older kids at sleeping in. So I think it's a little bit of different looking forward to different activities. Well, and I imagine we would both switch. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you remember the and it looks good, but I'm telling you, when you're tantruming over the chocolate chips because your sister got to put more in than you, the sleeping in looks really good too. Yeah, yeah. I actually don't mind the sleeping in part, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, every now and then, that's for sure. So, so Whitney, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, thanks, Craig. I um, let's see. I do a radio show right now. I do uh, an afternoon show, but uh, I had done most of my career doing the morning show. Um, so I would get up around like 3.30 in the morning and be at the station for five and uh, do a show and then leave around, you know, 11, 12, sometimes one even. So those were those were heavy days. Um, but now my life is a lot simpler. Uh, I kind of scaled back and my company was really great uh, to help me do that. So now I do at 12 to three shift. So I kind of just float around in the morning and then do my job. And then I float around in the afternoon, which is uh, a little more conducive to um, being a mom and, and kind of family life. Right. And nice. so so how did you even get into it? First of all, you do have a very, very pretty, lovely voice. 
Oh, thank you. Did <laughs> people tell you that growing up? And how did you even get into radio? And did you train your voice? Tell us about it. Oh, well, you know, it, what's interesting about radio now is um, it's not really about the voice. It's about like personality and being able to connect with people on uh, a certain level quickly, you know, and, and reeling people in. Uh, and connecting with them emotionally so that they want to listen to you, so that they want to keep hearing what you have to say, so that they come back to you. And of course, uh, I'm on a music station, so that is a piece of it as well. Uh, but the way I got into it was uh, I was just kind of like, I don't know, sometimes I like, maybe this is too TMI. But uh, I was the youngest and I probably didn't get enough attention as a kid. And I was just like an attention mongrel, you know. So when I was young, I was always like on stage or wanting to be on stage or be in the class clown or being goofy. Uh, and uh, my goal or my dream was to be on Saturday Night Live. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And then I got older. And, you know, as you get older, you kind of slip away from those dreams and you have new dreams. And I thought about being a teacher. So I went to school for a couple of years to university and I just kind of wasn't connecting to it. And then uh, I had, I think I had like a, just like an open house at the radio school here in my hometown. And, uh, and I just right away connected to it. And the instructor was like, you have to do this. Like, I can just tell that this is kind of one of those things. Yeah. And so I did it for, uh, it must have been 10, 10 or 11 years. And then I quit after I had my kids. I had kind of tried to juggle everything. And juggling, I don't know. Like, there's, I don't know if there's really such a thing as balance. And I think that that's kind of part of the balance is like understanding that you're not going to be able to give to each um, factor in your life equally, right? And we can get more into that later. But um, yeah, so then I so then I quit for a couple of years and just kind of did some stuff from home. And now I'm back and it's wonderful. I really love just being back and being part of it. And the music is awesome. I love music. So uh, it all kind of work together and I love people as well and I was definitely missing uh missing that aspect of it so do you have yeah. do you do um talk shows do you have um like a music inter interwoven into it or and do you do you did you create your own show so you moved up in the ranks like I imagine morning shows is probably extremely popular as a DJ host as well because there's so many listeners mm -hmm. so did you develop and pitch your own show to the producers of the radio station? How does, how does a career develop? Oh, great question. Um, so the way I did it, it all, it's all, it's one of those, um, it's one of those careers that doesn't have X, Y, Z equals this, you know what I mean? It, it's just kind of one of those, those things that you can form a path depending on how hard you work and depending how hard you want it. So what generally happens in radio is you go to school and this is kind of what I did. You go to school and then you work and like some real small town, you make zero money and you just like struggle for a while. It's I've heard it and I've never been a hairdresser, but I've heard it like uh, compared to hairdressing where the first five years are the tell. If you can make it through the first five years, you're going to do good and you're going to be able to make money and etc. But um, you got to want it and you got to love it. You know, it's just like any art, right? It's it doesn't pay off right away. So. So I struggled through for the first five years and, you know, did the small town, did another city, did it jumped around a bit. Uh, and then I actually found my way back here, back to my hometown, which was beautiful and uh, settled into a morning show that had already had two guys mm -hmm. and and so it was kind of already set up and uh, just kind of fit in with them. And we ended up having a ton of fun. And uh, that's kind of how it all started. That's great. Well, I, it sounds like you really, really enjoy what you're doing. I do. I do. I really do. Of course, like anything, though, there are drawbacks and, uh, um, you know, um, exchanges, I guess you call them, or nothing's perfect and nothing will ever be perfect right right well it, it sounds really nice 
uh, Whitney, that you were able to, you know, you did your 10 years there and get yourself solidified in the industry and then able to step away for a couple of years with your kids and then come back to it and you're all rejuvenated and right mm -hmm. into it again and passionate about it can feel that in you. So that's, that's fantastic. And you talked a little bit earlier about like your daily schedule, but you know, I have to imagine with a radio station that there's a lot of event commitments that your radio station does cross promotion that involve evenings, weekends. How do you manage all this in your family life? Oh, great question. Uh, you know what? The short answer is I, I didn't, <laughs> honestly, uh, because there are there are a lot of weekend things. Uh, you're always um, thinking about, OK, Friday, I have this event, you know, and it's usually an event with like hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. And you're it's nerve wracking, you know, no matter how many times you do it, you still and I have fallen on my face so many literally and figuratively in front of that many people. And so, you know, it's scary. And, and so I think there was a, a little uh, element of that that became too much when I started to have kids and I, and I wasn't sleeping and et cetera, et cetera, to like deal with that anxiety and that, that like, oh man, there's a big event coming up and oh man, okay, I got Friday, I have this event. And then I had, Saturday, I have this thing in the afternoon and then Sunday I'll have to do this. Uh, when I didn't have kids, and it was just me and my husband, and we were just like renovating houses and, and you know, stuff like that. It, 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 I was able to catch up on sleep, right? Or, or catch up on like some quote unquote me time. But uh, once the kids came, it just kind of wasn't, I wasn't able to do that. And so now um, the big sort of thing in my life is just not taking on too much. Like the number one thing I need to do is say no. And that is such a hard word if you're not used to saying it. Um, and you know, somebody gave me this advice and it's great advice uh, to get an assistant and then have them say no. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, right. they can be the bad, you know, oh no, she's busy. Whereas like, you know, if you're talking to someone and you know them and you know they're uh, the organizer of this event that you really believe in and that you really wanna help out, to say no to that person is really hard because you do genuinely want to do it. But if you have someone uh, who's not invested in it, who doesn't have these same emotions that you do, who can be like, listen, you have three things that week. You can't do that. You know, you need to just chill out or be with your family. Um, the other sort of challenge that I was facing was my husband works away. He works uh like an hour away. So he would wake up at 5 a.m. He goes to work at 5 a.m. and then he's home by 8 p.m. So yeah, so it's a long day and I ended up kind of being alone a lot and there wasn't a lot of time for family. And so it made it even more important to start saying no and to understand, you know, the value of my time and the value of my of my family time. Like that needs to be number one priority, you know. Well, and I think it's not necessarily saying no, it's saying yes to the, to the priorities in your life. Oh, yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, saying yes to your family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, having your, your kids are young, they're, um, they're early school age. Yes. So having had kids in that, um, that stage of life, you, you, you know, some listeners and viewers can, I'm sure, understand this. You feel like you are in it forever. <laughs> and, and it's not forever, but at the time yeah. you're so exhausted and so tired. I say, I, I can't remember the first decade of my kids' lives because I was so tired. Uh, well, and then, you know, it's tough because then I've heard new challenges arise, you know, then it's getting them to soccer, or getting them to dance or getting them to et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. I it's mean, a it's a balance. It's a, balance. To balance. it's a balance that may never be perfect. And it's also just really hard. And I don't think anyone ever says like being a woman, having a career, being a mom, being a wife, being a public figure, having responsibilities to your company, et cetera, et cetera. It's all just really, really hard, you know, yeah. and we see these women do it and we're you know, like, oh, how does she do it? How does she, she looks like she's not struggling. Well, she's probably struggling, you know? And it, maybe she's not admitting it to herself or maybe she is, I don't know, right? Or maybe she has an assistant who's saying no, I don't know. Right, 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 right. right. Well, I, I, I remember when uh, my kids were little and I would have to do the baking for the schools and I don't even know if they oh. do schools anymore, but 
Um, I, after about three or four years of baking from scratch, and everybody knows that who's a listener, I do not bake. I am not. That is not. I'm not that person. Yeah. So I would. I finally succumbed to buying it from a bakery. So I. I say I buy it with my own two hands. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's beautiful. Fantastic. What, what that works, works, right? Whatever yes. makes it. And like, it. let's be honest. It's for kids, and you could just give them some sugar cubes. <laughs> The teacher would love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Whitney, being in in your community and being a radio um, host, and I'm sure a celebrity, how, mm. what's that like in the community? Like, do are you able to have a normal life? Because I'm sure people, as you say, they've seen you at events, they know your voice, they know who you are. So, what's that like behind the scenes, or are you constantly noticed and? Um, you know, what's it like being a, being a celeb? Uh, well, what's great about my hometown is <clears throat> I grew up here. And so, and it's, it's already kind of a smaller uh, city. Uh, and so y- you kind of, it, it just feel, it just makes the city feel like a big hometown more because every time you're like, oh, hey, Craig, or, oh, hey, Susan. Oh yeah, getting some meats. Hey, cool. And so that's the kind of way I like to look at it. Uh, certainly when I am like really tired or I haven't been taking care of myself, it feels like everybody wants a piece of you, you know? Uh, and that's just something that I need to be aware of. And that once I have that feeling, I need to know like, okay, I need to go back to, you know, meditate or go back home and sit on the couch and watch Netflix for a while or, or do a puzzle or whatever it is that like I can recharge. Um, I, I will tell you what I think is probably a really tough place is now everyone has access to you via social media, you know, and there's kind of been a new push as, and I am not a celebrity. I don't feel, I don't consider myself one, but I've definitely heard from like actual celebrities, you know, like, like Seth Rogen's and, and you know, whatever, and uh, Katy Perry's and stuff that uh, you need to make yourself available to people and that it really goes a long way when you do. And, um, and so that's a challenge a bit, you know, like trying to message people back and trying to make them feel like, yeah, I see you and I hear you. And, um, and I really honestly love people. Like that's why I got into the job. And so when someone reaches out and messages me, and I can like make a friend, I'm all about it, you know? Unless I haven't been taking care of myself, then I'm like, who's this guy? What does he want? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, or if they're asking me what color my underwear is, then it's a. <laughs> yes, a bit. Yes, a bit. Yeah. yeah. It's an instant hair, block. Right? Yeah, bear. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you, you do, you feel pressure to get on social media. And I find there's so much social media, so many vehicles for social media now. There's, you know, there's, um, Obviously, Facebook was kind of the the first. There's Instagram, Pinterest, um, now TikTok. Are you are you have a you have an account on TikTok? I take it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And and what's that like? Is it is what what do you post? What do you do? And do you do you, where's the where's your following? Is it mainly on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? Where's where's your area? Well, Facebook, I've certainly been on longer, and so therefore I have more just interaction on it. And it's its own beast, you know, like Facebook is a different beast than Instagram, than TikTok. And so you kind of have to know what platform you are on, how you're going to connect with the people on that platform. And, um, you know, Instagram now has reels because they want to be more, a little bit more like TikTok, or maybe that's not why, but, you know, um, I don't know if they're going to listen and be like, I'm sure, I'm sure the CEOs of Instagram will be coming (laughs) after you. Claudia and Craig. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, but go yeah, ahead. Go ahead, Whitney. Uh, and then TikTok's different too. So every spot I kind of have, like Facebook is sort of, Facebook and Instagram is kind of like an extension of my personality and, uh, and, and of me and, and what I want to tell my friends um, who are also listeners. So they're not really close friends, you know, so I, I don't want to be TMI all the time. But I do want to just like be honest and real as much as I can. I try not to use filters as much as I can, but sometimes they look 
so damn good. You know, <laughs> so that's cool. And then TikTok, I actually just started uh, a few months ago and I'm just kind of learning the platform and it's been a really exciting place. And I actually love TikTok. There's so many amazing people. And what's different about TikTok is that it's not your friends looking at your stuff, right? It's everybody. So you have to manage your content differently. So I would say TikTok is more of a platform of like your niche. So what can you give TikTok that nobody else can? You know, what's different about you? And then Facebook is more like, how do you connect with your friends or your audience that are like your friends, you know? Right, right. And do you post, do you talk about um, being a wife, mother, a radio host, do you bring your family into the, the, the things that you're talking about and posting? Because, you know, we're talking about family right now. So I imagine that's part of the conversations you have as a radio host as well. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things I get feedback on the most is uh, that I'm, once I had kids, I was just real about it. Like I was real about how much breastfeeding sucks and how it sucks to like, you know, wake up at four in the morning and then at five in the morning and then your husband's still sleeping and then the baby's crying and you're like, can you try one time? And he's like, I don't have boobs. And you're like, <laughs> you know, so I've always been really real about that and real about my struggles. And that's definitely something that I've come through on Facebook. I haven't necessarily done that on TikTok yet because I'm still kind of figuring out what what my voice is on TikTok, but on Facebook certainly, and um, and I and I think it's it's something that's really important to do too. You know, is to be real with uh, what's going on and and your expectations of yourself and um, have that conversation. Uh, although I will say I have a no kids posting policy. Okay, I don't post pictures of my kids. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Some, I know some celebrities obviously do, but yeah, it's a, it's interesting where you have to put the boundaries or where you feel comfortable putting the boundaries. Yeah. And right? it's just a personal thing, you know, yeah. it's just kind of how it is. I don't want people, and a, a friend of mine that I work with, he had a, some stranger come up to his kid and be like, Oh, Hey, so-and-so. And I was like, Bleh. and that freaks me out forever. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We should talk about uh, TikTok and, and Facebook, Whitney. Uh, what do, what are you looking for from the platforms? Is it to boost your online presence, to promote yourself, the radio station, combination of, you know, just share stuff with people? What do you, what do you use? What are the strategies? Uh, good question, Craig. Um, I think what, what I'm looking for is to continue to create that emotional connection. And I think what I kind of had alluded to earlier about radio is what you want to do is create a connection with someone, right? And you want them to see you as like someone that they can then connect with and be friends with. And and I genuinely want that. And so that's kind of just an extension of that. So I'll post anything, really. Sometimes it's like, hey, I have hairy armpits today, you know, or, you know, just like things that I would joke around with my friends about because that's kind of who I am, right? Uh, TikTok, again, is something a little bit different. I'm not sure where I am on TikTok yet. Uh, so far, my biggest video was one of me failing uh, at making hamburger helper. <laughs> so that so far has been like my star. So I don't know if maybe it's cooking disasters is my like niche, uh, but something to think about, I guess. You get helper to help you with hamburger helper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Someone called it hamburger helpless. <laughs> <laughs> Which I laughed. I was like, yeah, that is me. Uh, so I'm curious, being, again, a radio personality, wh what was COVID like? Did did the studio shut down? Like some of the, uh, we're in Toronto, so some of the radio personalities are still at home and their studios are at home. They haven't actually gone back. You know, Toronto is still in, in a, a bit of a lockdown, not a bit. It is in a lockdown situation. So wh what, what happened with your station and yourself and your life? With our company, um, they did take like any two person shows, they would have the other person at home and do like a, a remote show. Uh, but then um, they needed people to still be in there and press the buttons, right? So to get the people on the air, right? So they would usually have the host there as well. Uh, I actually got hired back during COVID. So that was a really interesting, I was, like one of the only people getting a job during COVID. So that was kind of lucky for me. But um, it was just kind of like, 
uh, don't talk to anybody, you know, just do the hand sanitizer, get in the studio, sanitize everything. And just same as you were, if you were going to a grocery store, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. I was just wondering with, with kids at home and having to have, a, if any viewers are saying you've got a, like a soundproof booth there, um, mm -hmm. but I know that you're in studio again, but I was just wondering what it's like with balancing kids in a work environment with such a, an acoustic job. Right. Yes. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, well, I did do some um, voicing from my home during that time. So it is, that's a challenge. Absolutely. Like if the kids are home, you got to put a show on and just give them like a bunch of candy or snacks yeah. or something and then deal with the consequences later. You know, like right now it's just about keeping them quiet and, you know, being cool with them coming in and be like, mom, she yeah. hit me or, you know, you just got to be okay with it. Not, it's not going to be a perfect product, you know? Yeah. Well, I think the world has opened up to that. Everyone has a, their challenges with working from home and family and stuff. So yeah. I and I mean, it's kind of delighting as a listener, you know, you get to like peek into someone's uh, real personal life. Well, wonderful, Whitney. It's been phenomenal having you on and, and listening to you and talking with you. If people want to reach you, where they want to follow you on social media or, or what have you, where would the best place be for them to go? Uh, just Google me. <laughs> just Google me. Whitney Graves, Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm on TikTok, obviously. Uh, they'll find me. If they want to find, find me, they'll find me. Our paths will cross. Let the universe decide. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Whitney. It's been a pleasure having you on. And best of luck with your kids, your career, your family, advancements and everything. It's just It's been a lovely, lovely pleasure having you on with us today. Yeah, it was wonderful seeing your smiling faces, you guys. I listen to your podcast and I love it. So... Keep it up and happy family day. Yes, you too. Enjoy. You well, Whitney. Thank Enjoy. you. Take care. So everyone, we always close the podcast with a closing quote. And I think this is very appropriate for today. So here's the quote. I've learned that you can't do everything and do everything at the same time. And who said that? Anybody? Ding, ding, ding. That was Oprah Winfrey, one of the people that I love to follow and watch. So um, I think very, very appropriate for today's segment as well. So everyone, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our podcast channel. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the notification bell to get any updates on our latest podcast. And once again, it was so great having you on with me. And uh, best of luck with everything. And uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks, Whitney. Thanks, everyone. Take care.